been meaning to film this video for three days now. Here, alas, a few days late is my August TBR um, and what I have checked out from the library at the moment. I think I'm gonna go through nonfiction first, then I'll do fiction, and then I'll do graphic novels and memoirs. So for nonfiction, the first book that I have is Memorial Drive. This is a memoir. The author is looking into growing up with two parents of different races and also the grief of losing her mother. I imagine this is going to be a hard one and I also have it out from audiobook so that's how I'm probably going to consume it. I also have Deep Delta Justice which is a look into a civil rights case that happened in 1966 and it's following someone who was charged with the crime of touching the arm of a white child and so he hired a lawyer to contest this obviously um, and it's that court case in book form. If you don't know already, I sometimes get really obsessed with specific cases, true crime cases. I feel like in general in the true crime community, people have pet cases, just some stories grab them more and you know, they follow them more. And one of those for me is the Shanann Watts and Chris Watts family side that happened in the North Denver suburbs. I just read a book that took a more psychological approach. I am curious to read other authors' accounts just because I felt like that book didn't really get everywhere that it could based on what we know about the case. So I'm going to read The Perfect Father. I also have this one out from audiobook. It looks like the author is a New York Times bestselling author. So I'm hoping that the writing is going to be a little bit better. Does that make me a weirdo that I keep reading about the same cases just like I did this past couple months? How I've been reading about the Larry Nassar scandal and sexual abuse case. Sometimes I, I question myself of why these stories grab me or interest me. Some people just read really nice heartwarming things and I'm over here not doing that. Along those same lines, I have Homicide by David Simon. I have been looking forward to reading this book. We just finished The Wire for the first time all the way through. I think I mentioned that a couple videos ago. And I've been reading quite a few books this year about Baltimore in the time of Black Lives Matter and uh, police brutality. I really enjoy learning about the city and David Simon seems like the person to ask about Baltimore. This, this is a nonfiction um, reporting account of a year on the killing streets. He was a reporter for the Baltimore Sun for a long time before he became a television producer and writer. Can you tell what kinds of sad things I like to read about? murder and violence. I also have Political Junkies. This is by Claire Bond Potter. The little subtitle is From Talk Radio to Twitter, How Alternative Media Hooked Us on Politics and Broke Our Democracy. So this is looking into kind of similar to Andrew Morant's Antisocial, which I read a few months ago, into how social media and politics kind of merges. I know that I'm going to be kind of called out in this because that's honestly how I consume my news these days and it's not a great thing, so maybe I will learn something that will change my current habits. I also have out a classic. A few months ago I saw that the audiobook was being released for the first time ever, so I put it on hold, and it's for um, Richard Wright's renowned autobiography of his life, Black Boy, and this is about him growing up in the South. It was originally published in 1944. Then I have um, two books that don't have book jackets because they came from university libraries. One of them is The Body Papers, which is a memoir. Um, I believe it's supposed to look into memories, identity, and family, um, and that's kind of all I needed to know about this. I haven't been able to spot a um, audiobook for it, sadly. And then the other one, the cover is actually really beautiful, so I'm going to show you a picture. It's a mind spread out on the ground. This is by Alicia Elliott. She is a Canadian author, a Canadian indigenous author, and this is all different stories about a variety of topics. So I've heard really good things about this from the book bully, and I feel like I don't read very many accounts um, from an indigenous background, so I'm looking to diversify my reading in that way. So I'm gonna read this one. And then two more nonfiction. One of them is, is Rape a Crime? This is kind of a three-prong approach to the subject. It's the author looking at her own history with sexual assault, as well as looking at how it's invest how sexual assault is investigated in general, and then um, how it should be, and that's the manifesto part. This is a topic that usually if there's like a new book coming out, that deals with sexual assault, 
or um, you know grapples with those subjects, I want to read it. And then finally, one that I'm currently reading, um, I'm maybe 50-ish pages in, is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. I'm really enjoying this one so far, more than I anticipated. It's really honest and really visceral and um, vulnerable. It's kind of giving me um, Saeed Jones vibes in how honest it is. I'm excited to finish this one. I'm gonna read some more of this today before I go to work. So that's it for nonfiction. So let's look through my fiction. This deck is not as big. Um, maybe I'll divide it by age range. I have only one middle grade and that's small spaces. I feel like I middle grade myself out <laughs> in the past couple months. I read so many in March, April. Um, and May that I really haven't read that many in June and July. This is supposed to be spooky and I've been looking forward to reading different kinds of middle grade fiction to then add them to um, recommendations lists at work basically. It's kind of hard to find spooky books in this age range. Let's go through the three young adult and then I'll get to the adult books. So one I have um, on audiobook is Girl Unframed. I believe it has to do with male attention and beauty and then there's like other stuff that happens including a crime of passion possibly there's a real danger and one that i've been mentioning lately that uh, i finally got a copy of and i would like to listen to is slay by Brittany morris role playing that's the word i'm looking for so it's supposed to be like a video game role playing book kind of like ready player one but it has to do with race and then it also deals with kind of harassment that is faced online as well last but not least i want to read you should see me in a crime this is, was one of the things that I got from Libra FM last month and this is supposed to look at a girl who is trying to win um, her prom because it comes with a cash prize that will help her go to college. And then I have three um, fiction books. One of them is Kim Jid Young, born 1982. This is by Cho Nam Yu, and this is all that I needed to read. Set in modern day Korea, this mesmerizingly diagnoses the endemic misogyny and institutional oppression that is relevant to us all. I also have The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I got it on um, as an ALC from Libra FM last month and I want to really get to it this month. And this looks at two sisters who are twins and one of them passes as white so they kind of live two separate lives. I'm excited to see what I think because everybody it feels like everybody is reading it so I'm gonna read it along with everyone else. And then lastly I have The Perfect World of Miwako Sumida by Clarissa Gonewan. And the cover is what called to me. I saw it on display and I was like, I love that. Again, very similar to this book here. It looks pretty depressing. Um, the main character to start off has hanged herself and leaving everyone around her really reeling about the suicide. And she was hiding in the mountainside, basically running away from someone before all of this happened. And you're kind of trying to figure out what it was that led to the situation. Let's go through my graphic novel stack. I have quite a few exciting ones. One that you've seen before is Fights. I mentioned this one in my Reading Rush TBR and this looks at a young boy who is living in an environment where fighting is very common and it says it's one boy's triumph over violence. This is what it looks like on the inside. I also have a book called Ink in Water and this is how I kicked anorexia's ass and embraced a body positivity. So it's uh, an account of someone that has dealt with anorexia. I've read one other um, account about anorexia that's also in graphic format so I'm gonna compare it to this one and see what I think. I also have Alice from Dream to Dream and this is my recommendation from a coworker. This is what the art looks like on the inside. I think that it has some fabulous themes in it as well. Um, so there is kind of some fantasy elements. So I'm curious to see how much the fantasy elements are important to the story, because usually I don't love when graphic novels have fantasy elements. So we'll see. I have a huge one called Grass. This is by Kyung Suk Jendri Kim. And this is a look at, quote, comfort women um, were used by the Japanese military, um, that they were kind of forced to do this through war time. So I'm interested to see how she deals with this subject. And this is what the art looks like. 
All right, I have three more. One is Heavy Vinyl, which is a series that I've seen Brie talk about um, from Falling for Romance. She really loves the series, so I'm excited to get to it. I really enjoy what the art looks like, and I'm kind of excited for just like a female friendship graphic novel story. Then I also have the fourth Babysitter's Club. I just started watching the Netflix series and I've really been enjoying my time with it and it really inspired me to pick up the next book in this graphic novel series. So I've read the first three but then I kind of stopped because it felt like I understood it and I didn't need to read anymore but after watching the show I want to see how it compares because I feel like so far they've been very true to the story. So this one is Claudia and Mean Janine and Claudia might be my favorite out of all of the four girls at this point. And then last but not least I have Larger Than Life. This is a history of boy bands from New Kids on the Block. I had, to, I had to think there for a second to BTS and this I guess you could kind of classify it as non-fiction but it has pictures and drawings and stuff so I'm putting it with my graphic novel stuff I don't know it's kind of image heavy this book reminds me a lot of um, paperback crush which looked at young adult fiction and how it's really changed over time I'm excited for the same reasons to read this one and to kind of see how boy bands have changed over time and let's see if my favorite groups are in there I can already see that some of them are but that is it for my stacks um i have some other things that might be coming in on audiobook these books that i showed you today are kind of my main goal so we shall see what i get to if you're interested in any of these let me know in the comments or if you've read any of them let me know in the comments as well and i'll see you in my next video bye bye